I was about to do a mic shootout here using the Hemu big uh, bass drum mic here. So as I was preparing to uh, set this thing up, I noticed that it had uh, come loose a little bit. I've been using this uh, with the band pre-COVID for miking up the kick drum on uh, gigs where we need a little bit more volume. So I wanted to, to take a few minutes to talk about build quality here. We're not going to hear the microphone, but I want to talk to you about build quality. So one thing I noticed as I was putting it in the mic stand is this is loose. So over time this has come loose, and I, I don't know if you can see it here in the video, but the whole housing here has come loose. So not, not a great thing. I guess we must have knocked it loose while we were packing up after gigs, something like that. So let's take a moment here to uh, look at the inside of the mic. So you, uh, if you have one of these, this will tell you how to fix it. And B, you can make a decision if you're thinking about this mic uh, about, you know, the build quality. There, there's obviously going to be some trade-offs for a mic so inexpensive. It's uh, about 34 bucks on Amazon now. And... Uh, you know, it, it is much less expensive than your typical low-end uh, mic. So, we got the lid off, or, or rather the cover off here. So I pulled that off. So, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it looks a lot like about the diaphragm size of an SM57. It's not actually that large when you take the, the mic cover off here. So, so how, do you, how do you tighten this thing if it gets loose? So, this is how you do it. So you got to pull off some parts here. This is kind of in there. You can see the solder quality. Let's get that in focus. Okay, so you can pull this out as well. That's not taken out. The, uh, the threads are still there. So it's, you know, kind of glued in here. It's got this little rubber mount thing. So... I'm gonna pop it back in here. You can see where the glue came loose. So it's kind of in there just to, to hold it up. So inside this thing, you can see there's a ring that holds it in there. And there's a little circuit board in there too. Let's get this in a light. Yeah, so you can see a little circuit board in here. But uh, this is how it got loose. This thing came loose over time. I don't know if you can see it with my finger, but I'm moving the... Uh, nut on the thread and that tightens it up so you know over time that's going to get loose on you so uh, we're still not quite tight there i'd rather not have to get in there with the tool I'm trying to finger tighten this thing okay so that's a lot better just finger tightening and i suppose i could get a tool again there um but, so let's put this guy back together now. So I've tightened it up, so it's going to hold in there. There we go. So there's our mic element right there. And again, it's not uh, large like, like you would see in a typical kick drum mic with a, a larger diaphragm. Uh, so stay tuned. There's going to be part B of this uh series where I'm going to take this and use it to mic a bass amp. And for reference, or a little preview here, I've got your uh, standard, you know, SM57 type mic. Then I've got a Stedman N90 right here, and that'll be a reference mic. That's a very flat frequency response, so you can really hear the coloration between, you know, a, a, a typical SM57 sound and what this sounds like. So stay tuned for part B of the video, but uh, I want to show you a little bit about the build quality there. Uh, not, not, didn't stay together uh, for a year of gigging. Actually, it's still loose. So uh, it's going to be enough for this, this demo, but I don't know if you can hear it. It's still kind of moving around. So I am going to have to take this thing apart and get in there with a, a tool and actually tighten it so it doesn't come loose again. Maybe put some uh, Loctite on it, uh, something so that when I'm out gigging again, if I continue to use this mic, doesn't fall apart on me on gigs. But uh, again, that's something for you to be aware of if you're thinking about a $30 kick drum mic. Um, eventually, you're going to have to go in there and tighten the thing up, which is not something I've had to do on some other microphones that you get from your typical uh, brand name vendors. They uh, typically stay together, take a lot of abuse. 
Uh, I can't remember ever having to to go in and tighten things up on uh, some name brand mics that we won't name right here. But the build, the build quality of this is a $30 build quality. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about this microphone. And definitely stay tuned for uh, kind of part two of this where we hear what the thing sounds like micing up a bass amp. And you can hear the sound from there. Uh, so there you go.